The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. This is Your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Presented transcribed as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. Do you and your wife worry about what will happen tomorrow instead of getting the most out of life today? There is one way to take the uncertainty out of tomorrow, and that is to plan for it. If you have the right plans, much of your worry is over. Now, there is a man who knows how to help you plan for the future. He is your local Equitable Society representative. In about 13 minutes, I want to tell you more about this helpful, friendly neighbor of yours. Your local representative of the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Tonight, the subject of our FBI file, Homicide. Its title, The Jolly Widow. Law-abiding citizens become shocked when they learn of the existence of an almost unbelievable organization whose business is murder. Murder skillfully performed by experts at reasonable prices. Law enforcement has met this menace in the past and will continue to vigorously fight it. The lawlessness and gangsterism which produce gunmen for hire have not suffered total defeat. In this country today, As is shown by tonight's case from the official FBI files, there still exists a class of professional killers, men who will cold-bloodedly shoot down a fellow human being they have never laid eyes on before. Their charge for so doing is, of course, higher than a decade ago, but it is still not regarded as exorbitant by those who patronize its services. Tonight's FBI file opens in a smartly furnished studio apartment in one of the better residential districts of a large western city. The young lady who lives in the apartment is just entering. Millie? Yeah, Carl. Did you go to the lawyers? Of course. I told you I would. Yeah, what's the story? They want to have the marriage annulled. For how much? 10000 Not enough. Carl, that ain't bad. What do you think you're playing, Jax? Well, it's better than the... The Seward family is loaded. They want to have your marriage to their pride and joy annulled. They've got to up that figure. Plenty. But, Carl, don't forget we did frame the guy into marrying him. That's not true. Oh, stop. If we got him so drunk, he'd have married you if you'd asked him. Very funny. Look, what do I tell the lawyer? About the money? Yeah. Tell him it's not acceptable. He said that was their final offer. Forget what he said. I've got other ideas. Where's your husband now? On a hunting trip. Where? At his camp. Have you ever been there? Yeah, why? You know the way up there well enough to direct somebody to the place? Sure. Look, what is this? We're not going to take the 10000 And we're not going to have your marriage to Mr. Seward annulled. We're not? No. I know how you can get all of Mr. Seward's money. How? It's very simple. Instead of being his wife, become his widow. Answer the door, will you, Mommy? Okay. Just a minute. Hello? Hello. Is Carl Jackson here? Are you Lester Colby? That's right. Come in, please. Well, hello there, Les. Hiya, Carl. Oh, there's Miss Corning, Mr. Colby. How do you do? Hello. Well, long time, huh? Yeah. You look fine, Les. Fine. Carl, uh, let's get down to business, huh? Oh, sure, sure. I've got a job for you. Hmm, I can use one. Horse has been running bad? Uh, they've been running fine, but too slow. Can I make you fellas a drink? Oh, swell, uh, scotch and soda for me, honey. 
Well, I'll have the same. Okay. What's your deal, Carl? I've got a client. I can't tell you his name. He wants to have a certain party disposed of. For how much? One thousand in cash. Where'd you come up with that kind of a client? Less. I don't ask you anything about your business, do I? Sorry. Where is this guy? He's up in a hunting lodge about 30 miles from here. Miss Corning has drawn a map for you with all the directions. Okay. When do you want the job done? Soon as possible. Tomorrow? Fine. Oh, and one thing. Yeah? It should appear to be an accident. A hunting accident. Hmm. It will. Swell. Now, here's the guy's picture, Les. Don't make any mistakes. I never have. Here's your drinks, boys. Oh, thank you, dear. Mr. Colby. Thanks. I have a toast. To what? To Les and a successful mission. The following evening at the local FBI field office, a sergeant of the state police is just introducing himself to Special Agent Jim Taylor. Mr. Taylor, I'm Sergeant Welch. Oh, hello there, Sergeant. Your agent in charge sent me in to see you. Fine. Well, sit down, won't you? Oh, thanks. What's on your mind, Sergeant? Uh, my regular patrol includes a pretty remote section of mountain country about 30 miles north of here. Yeah. There was a hunter found dead up there this morning. He'd been shot through the head. You identify him? Yes, his name was Walter Seward. He comes from a well-to-do family here in town. Mm -hmm. Was this a hunting accident? I don't think so. Oh, why not? Well, there were several factors in the case that make me seem to think he was murdered. Mm -hmm. First of all, examination showed that Seward was killed with a thirty-eight caliber bullet. Oh? Now, I've never heard of anyone going hunting with a thirty-eight. No, not unless they're hunting people. Well, what other factors have you? We found a car abandoned not too far from the scene of the crime. It had Oregon plates on it. Our office wired to see if it had been stolen. Mm -hmm. Did you find any trace of the weapon? No. How about footprints? Well, it's pretty dry country this time of year. Uh huh. Well, Sergeant, what would you like the FBI to do? I'd like some help on these. Well, that's a shell I found near the body. Mm -hmm. And that's the bullet the coroner removed from Seward. All right, I'll have them sent on to our laboratory in Washington, and I'll, uh, I'll get a check against the National Unidentified Ammunition File, too. What's that? Well, that's a file of guns and ammunition found at the scenes of unsolved crimes. Now, they'll check the markings on this particular bullet with other 38 slugs that they have on file, see if the same gun was used in any other crime. Mm. How long do you think it'll be before you get a report? Well, I'm afraid that depends on how busy they are. However, I'll be in touch with you just as soon as I hear from them. Yeah, Millie. Any word from Les? No. You think he'd call or something? He doesn't have to. Why not? He did his job. Very successfully, too. How do you know? I just read the morning papers. They all carried on account of a very tragic hunting accident. The Seward? Of course. Was he killed? Naturally. That's wonderful. He gave the story quite a play. One of them even had an editorial warning all of its readers to be more careful when they go hunting. No kidding. <laughs> hey, maybe we did some good with this. Oh, darling, that was the whole idea, to help the community. What happens now? I think you should go see Sewer's lawyer. Okay. And on your way, stop off at the bank. What for? Draw out $900. I want to give it to Les. You promised him 1000 well, I'm holding out 10% for my commission. How can you charge a commission? I was very careful to tell him the job was for a client of mine. Oh, look, how cheap can you get? Darling, this is merely good business. Okay. What do I say to the lawyer? Just tell him you'd like him to make all the necessary arrangements for you to collect your husband's estate. Carl, I wonder how much it'll be. Mm, I'd say at least a quarter of a million. No kidding. Gee, being a widow is wonderful. Busy, Mr. Taylor? No, no, come on in, Sergeant. Oh, thanks. I just got your message a little while ago. Have you heard from Washington? Yeah, I received a report on that bullet. Uh, it's in this file here. 
Uh, here it is. The bullet used to kill Walter Seward matched two others in the unidentified ammunition file. Two others? That's right. In October of 1946, there was a petty racketeer killed back east with the same gun. And in June of this year, the same gun was used to murder a bookmaker. Hmm. Almost sounds like the owner is a professional. Sure does. There's one thing that puzzles me, though. What's that? Well, the other two known murders that were committed with this gun were killings that involved other criminals. Mm Mm-hmm. Now, you told me that Walter Seward was from a well-to-do family. So how does he fit in? I don't know. We've checked on Seward, but he was never in anything that wasn't legitimate. But if we're correct in assuming that he was killed by a hired gunman, Sergeant, he had to be mixed up in something. That's true. I think the first thing to do, then, is go and talk to Seward's family. See if he had any enemies. Right. back here. So hot downtown. Mm, was it hot in the lawyer's office? No. His place is air-conditioned. That's not what I meant. Huh? I mean, how did you make out with him? Oh, I don't think he likes me very much. Really? Why not? I was so charming. Nothing happened. You mean he didn't go for the widow routine? Oh, yeah. He admitted I was a legitimate widow. Did you ask about the estate? Yeah. How much? Over $300,000. Oh, that must be less. Let him in. Okay. Hello. Hello, Mr. Colby. Come in. Thanks. Well, hello there, Les. Hello, Carl. Well, allow me to congratulate you. That was a fine job you did. Yeah, thanks. Well, I suppose you've come here about your fee. That's right. Millie? Yes, dear? Did you bring back that cash? Yeah, have it right here. And Miss Corning cashed my client's check. As you know, he requested secrecy. I know. Here's the money. Thanks. Well, here you are, Les. You're a thousand less ten percent commission for me, making nine hundred net. Mm, okay. Guess that closes the books, huh? Not quite. What do you mean? Well, let's review a few of the facts. Well? When you first talked to me about the job, I thought I was going to knock off some stale nobody. So? So I pick up the papers and find I've worked on a guy named Walter Seward who's worth a bundle. Well, what's your point, Les? I'm getting to that. I also find out that Miss Corning here is Mrs. Walter Seward. Who told you that? It's in the afternoon papers. Oh. Les, what difference does that make to you? I can figure as good as you can. She comes into a chunk of dough now as a widow. That's right. And you're going to get a piece of that dough for seeing to it that she became a widow. I still don't see why it matters to you. Carl, I did the dirty work on this job, and according to the papers, you two figured to split about 300000 Where's the whiskey? Why? Well, you two were nice enough to drink a toast to my success when I left for the mountains. Let's drink another toast to our new partnership. We will return in just a moment to tonight's exciting case from the official files of your FBI. Right now, I want to talk about your case, your problem. Perhaps the experience of Mr. Walter Wilson, one of the six million members of the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States, may help you. Mr. Wilson, I wonder if you'll tell me what your problem was before you joined the Equitable Society. My wife and I bought a home but we wanted to own it free and clear before we were too old to enjoy it. Yes, millions have that same problem, Mr. Wilson. Now, could you tell us what did solve your problem for you? We were listening to this program one evening, and we heard you describe a way to tear up our mortgage years ahead of time. That's the Equitable Assured Home Ownership Plan, the AHO plan. That's it. So next day, I phoned our local Equitable representative, and he dropped around that evening. He showed me how the plan provided a low-cost first mortgage with life insurance protection. He showed me how my wife would own the home free and clear without any further payments if something happened to me. Believe me, if all equitable men are as helpful as the man I talk to, you've got a fine organization. You can count on equitable representatives to be friendly and helpful. 
They see your problem from your point of view. They help you get the most from your life insurance dollar. You see, equitable men are experts, specialists in insurance. And they're backed up at the home office by a staff of trained technicians, actuaries, and economists. So please remember, no matter what your insurance problem may be, there is an answer. And your friendly neighbor, your local equitable representative, knows the answer. Why not get acquainted with him? There's no obligation. Consult your local telephone directory for your local representative of the Equitable Society. You'll be glad you did. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now back to tonight's FBI file, The Jolly Widow. Of all modern inventions, the one which has probably been of greatest benefit to the underworld is the automobile. Getting away in a fast car, a criminal can be many miles from the scene of the crime a few minutes after its commission. But while science sometimes gives aid and comfort to gangsters, it has also developed scores of new and improved methods of crime detection, all of which are constantly employed by your FBI tracing a bullet by means of minute markings on it to the gun from which it was fired, has led to the conviction of scores of gunmen. In tonight's case, we see the FBI's national unidentified ammunition file make an important contribution to the solution of a particularly vicious murder. Tonight's file continues in the FBI field office. Sergeant Welch of the state police is just approaching Special Agent Jim Taylor's desk. Hello, Sergeant. Hello, Jim. Did you contact Seward's family? I talked to his lawyer. He said he didn't know any enemies Seward might have had who would want him murdered. I see. He did tell me something that might help us, though. What was that? Well, he discussed young Seward's secret marriage. Yeah. It seems the marriage was the result of a frame-up, or so the lawyer said. But why didn't they have it annulled? Well, the Seward family hates publicity, and they were in the process of dickering with a girl to get her to agree to an annulment. What was her reaction to that? According to the lawyer, she seemed about to accept their offer of $10,000 when the murder occurred. I see. She gets the whole estate now, I guess. Yeah, that's the size of it. Oh, and uh, she's already been in to see him about it. I wouldn't say she was exactly in deep mourning then. No. Who is she? Or who was she before she married Seward? A nightclub singer. Uh-huh. She met Seward in one of the places where she was working. According to his lawyer, she got him quite drunk one night, drove him to a justice of the peace outside the city, and married him. Mm-hmm. Did you find out where we can locate her? Yeah, she lives in an apartment hotel. I checked over there before I came back to the office. She had uh, left word at the desk that she wouldn't be back for an hour. Can I use your phone, Jim? Surely. I want to report on this to my office. Okay, uh, I'll go over and talk to the widow, and we'll meet back here. from the lawyer? No. But while you were out, I had a visitor. Yes? No. This was a man named Taylor from the FBI. What'd he want? Well, he asked a million questions about Walter. When we got married, how, who was there. What else? He wanted to know if I ever heard Walter talk about any of his enemies. Why'd he ask you that? Well, he said that they knew that Walter was murdered. It wasn't a hunting accident. That's not so good. What do you think went wrong? Well, how do I know? I'm not working with the police. I just thought you might have an idea. Look, don't make me such a big man. You were a full partner when things were good. Have you heard from Les? Not a word. He said he'd get in touch with us when his money ran out. He must have had a couple of winners at the track. I hope he stays lucky. Maybe he won't bother us then. Well, that's wishful thinking, honey. He'll be back whether he goes broke or not. Carl, suppose he gets picked up by the cops. He might decide to talk. Yeah. That wouldn't yeah. be so good for us. Uh, wait. I just thought of something that might cover everything. What? You got any stationery in your desk? Sure. I want you to write a letter. To who? To the FBI. Now get some stationery and write what I tell you. So 
try to have kept you waiting, Sergeant. I was in talking to the agent in charge about this case. Oh, that's all right, Jim. You got to see Mrs. Seward? Yes, I did. You got anything from her? Well, that's what I was in talking to the agent in charge about. About what she told you? No. no she didn't tell me a thing I didn't know before I went over to see her. I don't understand, Jim. Well, after I interviewed her, I came back here to the office. Uh -huh. And about an hour later, I got this note from her. What does it say? Well, when I was talking to her, I asked her whether or not she knew of any enemy that Seward might have had who would go so far as to kill him. And she said no. That's correct. Now, in this note here, she says that she used to go with a hoodlum named Lester Colby before she married Walter Seward. And she thinks that Colby may have killed Seward? Yeah. She says that Colby was insanely jealous of anyone she even spoke to and that in some way he found out about her secret marriage to Seward. Well, who was Colby? Oh, we checked up on him. Got a very bad record. Fortunately for us, he's wanted by the FBI for unlawful flight to avoid prosecution. You gonna pick him up? Yeah. Having a warrant drawn up now for his arrest. And another one so that we can search his apartment. Mrs. Seward included his address in the note. When do you want to go over there? What time is it now? Mm, about 3.15. Well, those warrants ought to be ready by now. Let's pick them up and get going. Hello? Hello, Mrs. Seward. This is one of your partners. What do you want, Mr. Colby? Well, it's a long story. I... Uh... I went up to a bookmaker a little while ago, and I bet on three horses that were sure things. How does that concern me? They lost. That's too bad. Well, it's worse than that. I lost a thousand more than I've got. You shouldn't gamble. Look, I didn't call you for any lesson. What did you call for? Well, I want another thousand. Today. I gotta pay that bookmaker. Can he wait? Well, it's not his business. He plays for cash. Now, I don't care how you do it, but dig me up a thousand by six o'clock. Where am I going to get a thousand dollars? Call Seward's lawyer. He'll go for it. I can't call him. Look, I just told you. I don't care where you get it. Are you calling me from your apartment? No, I'm at the bookmakers now. Are you going home from there? No. I'm going to stay here until after the last race, and then I'm coming over to your place. I'll be there at six o'clock. Be sure you're home, and be sure you have that dough. <laughs> That you, Jim? Yeah. I got the keys. Good. Showed the superintendent the search warrant. He handed them right over. Huh? Let's go in. All right. Does it? Oh, go ahead, Sergeant. Thanks. Yeah. Well, I got one break anyway. Only got one room to search. Yeah. Let's take a look through this dresser, huh? Okay. Let's see. Shirts, socks, pajamas. Hey, this might be what we're looking for. What is it? A thirty-eight. That's what was used on Seward. Yeah, I know. Hey, Sergeant, take a look at this firing pin. Hmm. Off center, huh? Uh-huh. You remember the uh, peculiar markings on that shell that you found near Seward's body? Uh-huh. Well, this could easily be the gun that was used. Well, we sent it along to the laboratory and let them check. They can tell us for sure. Take a look at this one here. Uh, give me the gun, Jim. I'll wrap it up. Oh, okay. Here you are. Thanks. Anything in there? No. Let's try the gun. Mr. Colby doesn't have many possessions. No. Hey, wait a minute. What? There's something under these. Hey, Sergeant, look here. What is it? It's a hand-drawn map, and there are directions written here on it. Hey, uh, let me see that, Jim. Here you are. That's the territory where Seward was shot. Oh? This ties Colby into it, all right. Yeah. It does more than that, Sergeant. Let's get back to the office. Carl, where have you been? What's the matter? I got a phone call from my partner. Les? Who else? Where was he? With a bookmaker. Did he say if he was going home? No, he's coming over here. Well, then your note to the FBI won't work. I know. Did you say why he was coming here? I'll give you one guess. Money? Naturally. When did he say he'd be here? It's six o'clock. Well, six now. I called the FBI a few minutes ago and told them Les would be here. When did Les call? 
two hours ago. Well, why didn't you call the FBI I then? I was too upset. I didn't think. Carl, if he gets here before the FBI does, what, what'll we do? I'll handle that. Do you think we should call it? Answer it. Okay. Hello. Come in, Les. Thanks. Well, all partners present, huh? That's right. I won't waste much of your time. Did you dig me that money? Well, uh, it's not here yet. Would you call the lawyer? Yes, she did. Uh, he's sending it over. Oh, okay. Well, that must be the messenger now. Let him in, Millie. Yeah, sure. Hello, Mr. Seward. Oh, uh, come in. Thank you. I received your message. That man there is Les Colby. Huh? What is this? Stay where you are, Colby. I have a gun. Who are you? I'm a special agent of the FBI. I've got a warrant here for your arrest for the murder of Walter I'm Seward. I'm so glad you got here before he made any trouble. I'm grateful to you, too, Mrs. Seward. Hadn't been for you, we might never have known about Colby. Why, you double We also course. might never have found the map that you drew for Colby to get to your husband's hunting lodge. Huh? I found that in his room. The written directions on it match the handwriting in the note that you sent me at the office. Oh. Well, there must be some mistake. Well, I'll give all of you a chance to correct it. I'm taking you in now for questioning. Lester Colby was convicted in a state court for murder and sentenced to be executed. Carl Jackson was convicted as an accomplice to murder and sentenced to be executed. Mildred Corning, his female companion, was also convicted as an accomplice to murder and given life imprisonment. And thus, three more criminals saw their careers ended because of thorough investigative work by a special agent of your FBI. And the important thing about the arrests was that they removed from circulation a professional killer, a man who made his living by murder. His conviction also closed the files on a number of unsolved murders, thanks to the unidentified ammunition file a little-known but very important section of the laboratory of your FBI. Would you like to make sure your children get a good education? Would you like to retire in peace and comfort when you're 60? Would you like to own your own home free and clear? You can, and you don't have to be rich to do it. Your local Equitable Society representative, without any obligation to you, will be glad to show you how almost anyone with an average income can make his dreams of a secure future come true. Get acquainted with this helpful, friendly neighbor today. Consult your local telephone directory for the name of your local representative of the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will dramatize another case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Its subject, Larceny. Its title, The Big Frame. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of places or persons, living or dead, is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. Your narrator was William Woodson, and Special Agent Taylor was played by Stacey Harris. Others in the cast were Georgia Ellis, Bill Johnstone, Lynn Stallmaster, and John Stevenson. This is Your FBI is a Jerry Devine production. This is Larry Keating speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community and inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another thrilling transcribed story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The Big Frame on This Is Your FBI. (laughs) 